Okay. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I hope sincerely hope everyone is feeling well and finding ways to stay healthy. Happy New Year and happy MLK Junior Day. We're 17 days into the new year. We've already had two holidays. How about that? Like that. Uh, our vision is our destination, where we're going, and when we plan to get there. Our mission is our purpose, our goal, why we exist. It inspires us to action. Our core values are what we believe. Our values drive us and motivate us to continue the course of action. I welcome students and their parents, staff, community, all board members. Um, a special thanks to Mr. Lowe for assisting with the technology. We apologize for the delay in getting started today. Uh, today is Tuesday, January 17th, 2023, and I officially call today's meeting of the Clinton City Schools Board of Education to order. Thanks to everyone, our teachers, our other staff, students, parents, board members, and the community who makes our district the best that it can be. We recognize and appreciate your hard work and dedication. Our deepest gratitude is extended to our frontline and essential workers, those who care for us and protect us. Your hard work, commitment, and dedication are also recognized and appreciated. Our thoughts are so extended to our students, employees, and their families who are suffering from sickness and loss of loved ones. Special remembrance is requested for our city, county, state, and national leaders as we address all the challenges that we face today. Our students of the month and their parents will be joining us at 530. Uh, we will stop wherever we are in the agenda at that time to honor those students and employees for their hard work. Um, also want to welcome Mr. Bill Powell to our board meeting. He's with us today. Thank you, Mr. Powell, for joining us. We'll hear from him later during the meeting. Uh, thank you again to everyone for working hard every day and for making every minute of every day count. Our goal is to realize our vision and our mission and to fulfill our core values every day. Let's continue to find ways to promote vitality in our schools with our students and staff in our personal and professional lives. No matter who or what we are today, we can all be better tomorrow. We are stronger together. I will begin with a roll call. Please answer as I call your name. Uh, Mr. Clark Hales. Present. Uh, Pastor Russ Emanuel. Present. Dr. Oscar Rodriguez. Present. Uh, Ms. Carol Worley and Mr. Jeremy Edgerton are not yet with us, so please let the record show that. We're expecting them um, before the meeting ends. Attorney Rebecca Williams is joining us remotely. I'll, I'll check back with uh, Ms. Williams in a few minutes to make sure she's with us. She we can't hear her say present. Does that mean we still got a pay her? She may be listening, Clark. <laughs> uh, Superintendent of his staff, Dr. Wesley Johnson. Present, Madam Chair. Ms. Emily Devane. Present. Mr. John Lowe. Present. Dr. Teresa Malanus. Present. Ms. Sheila Peterson. Present. Ms. Nicole Hayes. Present. And we have our principal, Faison, from Sampson Middle School in the audience with us. Thank you for being here. Please stand and join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much. You may be seated. Next item on the agenda is public comments. We have no one registered for this session, so we'll move on to the approval of the board agenda. Uh, board members, you've had an opportunity to review the agenda. There are no revisions. I ask for a motion to accept the agenda as it's written. Madam Chair, I make the motion we accept the agenda as presented. Motion made by Pastor um, Emanuel that we accept the agenda. Can I get a second? Second, Madam Chair. Second, Dr. Rodriguez. All in favor, let it be known by the word aye. 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 Board agenda approved. Motion carried. Next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. Again, you've had an opportunity to review the consent agenda as it um, what has been presented. I need a motion to approve the consent agenda. Madam Chair, I make the motion that we approve consent agenda as presented. Motion made by Mr. Hales to approve the consent agenda. Can I get a second? Second, Madam Chair. 
Second, Dr. Rodriguez. All in favor, let it be known by the word aye. 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 Motion carried. Next item is instructional services. Dr. Molinas. Before you start, Dr. Molinas, Mr. Lowe, have we heard anything from uh, Attorney Williams? Okay, thank you. All right, we'll go on with Dr. Malinas. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, board members. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We are happy today. It is, would we call it the Monday of, of the week? <laughs> um, we've got a few items for your information. The first is our district improvement plan. So if we'll click on that. So just like a school, School districts have to um, submit an improvement plan, district improvement plan through NC Star. Attorney Williams. Attorney Williams. Attorney Williams. Okay, I hate it. Hey, Hi there, I'm here. Okay, I, I had to mute you. You were it was like playing the playback somehow of the live stream, but we're good. And I'm Thank not, you. I'm not a fan of my own voice, so to hear that did not make me happy. So, <laughs> all right. So our district improvement plan um, aligns with our strategic plan, and we also submit our district improvement plan in NC Star, just like the, the schools do. So um, what you have here is, is our goals for the next four years. Okay. I Are we good now? I'm sorry about that. Good. Seems to be better now. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to go through our goals for our district improvement plan and then some of the action steps and the numbers we, we've looked at. So, John, if you want to hit that first goal for us. Um, our first goal is all Clinton City School students will graduate high school graduate high school ready for enrollment, enlistment, employment, or entrepreneurship. And so um, our, our previously goal, our goal was college ready. We wanted to make sure that we were encompassing everything that our students should be ready for when they leave high school, whatever their choice may be. Our first action is um, that Clinton City Schools graduate rate will improve by 17% by the year 2026. Percentage of students who submit the FAFSA will increase annually, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. Um, the number of CTE credentials issued each year in Clinton City Schools will increase by 3% each year, reaching a total of 900 by the year 2026, and we'll look at some numbers next. Um, 2022 would be our baseline. It would start this year and go through 2026, all of our actions. And so our baseline was 78.4% for our graduation rate. And you could take a look at the numbers each year thereafter that our goals. So 85% this year, 90% the year after, 95 and 95. Our FAFSA completion goal, um, and we talked a little bit about this in one of the previous board meetings, we were the highest in our region with our FAFSA completion last year at 74.8% of our students. So that is our baseline. Um, talking with the high school counselors and, and just different um, stakeholders, we were looking at increasing to 77% for this year, 80, 83, and 86. And then our CTE credential, our baseline was 2022 with 822 credentials that were earned by our high school students in last year, increasing 3% each year, which is actually one of our strategic plan goals as well. We'll put us at 847, yeah, 847, 872, 899, and then 926. So those are our goals for each year for the next four years. So that's our high school, and those those goals will help us reach enlistment, enrollment, employment, and entrepreneurship. 
When we look at third grade reading, our goal for the last four years was that 100% of all of our students would be proficient. And so we looked at the goal and we decided we were going to change it a little bit. So our third grade proficiency in reading will increase by a minimum of 10% each year for the next four years. Um, that kind of gives us a better target than just saying 100% of our students will be will be ready. So um, our first is proficiency of third grade reading will increase to 59% in four years. And then our M class for second grade proficiency will increase by five percentage points each year for the next four years. Our baseline, our third graders were 39.9% proficient last year in reading. It'll go up 44, 48, 55, and 59 comparable to the year. And then M class proficiency for 2022 was 62.4 and you'll see an increase each year to 65, 72, 75, and then 79. So those are those are our goals for the next four years. Any questions? Obviously with those goals there's going to be a set of actions and, and a lot of those actions um, you know, aligns with our strategic plan and where we are moving with our strategic plan. And you've all seen a copy of that. We talked about the strategic plan in August or September, maybe, I believe you introduced it. So a lot of those align. Dr. Melanis, I have a question. Sure. Um, on the CTE credential, mm -hmm. I know in previous board meetings, we've wanted to know more about how students are getting prepared for the workforce. Mm -hmm. Would you be able to maybe on the baseline, would you have an idea of what those credentials are that students are going after? Because mm -hmm. I think that that would be important to then know, you know, what industries maybe as a school system we need to maybe go and talk to and create internships. Because if, if we got students that are really interested in the, I don't know, HVAC or construction or or um, animal science, that could help elevate more completion. Absolutely. So the presentation that Christy did last uh, last month, um, would have been in November, right? I guess we did, would have been in November, had a lot of the areas. Um, so I'll ask her to take those areas and just give us actual numbers. Um, this year, there are actually a few more areas that students can be credentialed in that will help. Um, increase that credentialing as well. So the classes have changed. There's some that didn't have credentials before that now have credentials this next year. And so I'll have her do a breakdown for those and I'll share that with you guys at the next board meeting. Mm -hmm. yep. Dr. Melendez, how often is this plan um, reviewed and by whom and would it be helpful? I know it's a long question. <laughs> would it be helpful if you put the uh, person responsible action steps, right. timeline, those type things in this actual plan as opposed to, I guess, comparing it or, or looking at it, looking at two different plans simultaneously? Sure. So what you have when you go into NC Star are all the action steps that will make each of these goals happen. So when you go into NC Star, our overall goal might be students being ready for enrollment, enlistment, employment, and entrepreneurship. But when you go into the plan, there's a specific plan for the FAFSA and who's responsible and what types of actions will take place. So it's just like a school improvement plan. When you go into NC Star, you see all of their actions, how, who is responsible for making sure that action complete timelines for those actions that's all in the system what you've got here is just an overview of our five goals with our two big overarching mm -hmm. so they're very it's very delineated in that NC star system you look at it monthly or quarterly how does how does that work uh, yes so the district improvement plan is looked at every month um, as, a, as a district leadership team and we've done it in CNI and this year we've kind of moved it to leadership since that you know principals and everyone are responsible to help making sure that happens so we look at it in leadership we look at the goals we look at the actions mm -hmm. and then we also look at the strategic plan monthly in leadership as well because that's a living document thank you other questions or questions by other board members Please let the record show that Mr. Edgerton arrived at 417. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Other questions of Dr. Malinas regarding the district improvement plan? If not, go ahead, Dr. Malinas. Okay. So the next is the testing and account accountability update. It is in a yellow folder that's on your table. 
These scores are embargoed into 2023 um, in September. So whatever you see in that folder needs to remain in your brain <laughs> until September when all of the scores are um, released by the state. So these are our preliminary scores. It's fall. They're not, they have not been approved by the state yet, but this is for high school for fall testing. So you'll see the four areas that were tested in the fall, biology, English two, math one and math three. Um, and if you look on slide four, you'll see those scores. How many students took the test would be the denominator and the numerator is how many were proficient. And then the percentage is the last column that you'll see. And while we can't talk numbers, we can, I can try to answer any questions. And how has the grade scale changed to either improve these numbers or right is, is, is the, the, the D I got in 95 going to be the same D they're getting today the, 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 grade, the grade scale is an A still an A pass fail it, 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 have, have we changed what the, what the numbers are? So you know, I'm at 69. 10-point scale? Is it we, we, we use a 10-point scale. I'm not sure what it was when, when you were in school. It's a 10-point scale. <laughs> it did go to 7 for one time in the, in the early 2000s and the 90s, and now it's back to a 10-point scale. So it is a 10-point rating scale. And their scores... <laughs> <laughs> and so their EOG scores count for 20% of their grade. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um. All right. If you scroll down or flip through your pages, um, you will see the percent of participation. So you'll see that 99% of students participated in what the number is for each level. So for all of our EOCs, 99% of our students participated in testing. Deborah, can we go back to unofficial? Yes, it's all unofficial, the but yes. Numbers, uh, yes. I don't have a slide page. You point out the percentage. So are you, you're looking where it says unofficial? Yep. Yes, sir. Can you maybe go back? So I see a 29, a 44, 42. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not talking numbers. So you tell me column, whatever column you want me to look at. <laughs> so yes. So, so please know that this is just one semester of classes. Mm -hmm. This is just the fall semester. These The students taking these classes, the classes could be an honors class, the class could be a, reg, a regular um, uh, just CP class. It, so it's hard to compare that to anything. We're just letting you know at this moment, this is where unofficially we stand in, in that particular course. In an instance like this, mm -hmm. would you have discussed with other people in other districts kind of, ask how how they did do you uh, they, can't share. they can't share that at all information. okay no sir what what do you think this has done coming back from covid all that do you do you like these numbers i i definitely think the numbers are better than we saw last year at this time okay yes are, are they where we I, want I, I, them? are we where they want them to be that, that's the, that don't be my question. I know yeah. they're better than they were last yeah, year. They are better. We are progressing. Are they as where we want them to be? Absolutely not. Because is it as high as what y'all were realistically anticipating the the increase being, or would y'all have thought it was going to be higher than what it shows? Um, I think growth in a lot of those. We got a lot of good growth off students. Okay. So so remember, you know, if you have a student coming into a class, it just you know, speaking when I was a principal, if I had a student coming into a grade level that was two years behind and I made a year and a half of growth, that's a victory. So when we look at growth, I think we made great growth in a lot of these areas. 
um, proficiency and growth are not the same always because if I'm coming in behind, I've got to catch up. And, and so I think we did, we saw good growth. Yeah. And I think Principal Westerbeek would, would second that. And we'll mm -hmm. have things in place to continue to help with this growth. Yes. And, and proficiency. As we're looking at it after mm -hmm. this first semester. In a, Absolutely. I feel like they did proficiency, but I mm -hmm. guess that's where I was going. How, what are we doing? You know, are we looking at that? So. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Proficiency and growth, because I think both are important. Okay. Um, and if you get the growth, you're eventually going to get the proficiency Absolutely. because you're bringing kids up to where they need to be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can't. I got a general idea, but looking at this, how does how do these line up with what we looked at in our terms? Are we continuing to outperform what we were doing pre-COVID? That's going to depend on how many kids still need to test next semester. So that's the hard part. This is the, you know, your, de your denominator tells you how many students took that test. That may be a third, that may be a half, that may be two thirds, I, you know, the end of the years are the numbers you really want to see. Um, we, we, you know, those are the ones that are going to tell us what we need to know, because then we can compare them to last year's numbers right. and really do a strong comparison. This is just kind of a, a temperature check, kind of here you are, this is where we are right now. Um, we like some of this, <laughs> some of this is better than, than, than we like some of this. We don't necessarily like line one yeah. per se. Yeah. Um, Big enough that we are looking at helping bringing in some outside people in the first the first row, correct? Is that what you mean? The first row, yes, uh -huh. um, to bring some people in to support um, that that area, mm -hmm. and we've had that conversation, and so we've got some people who we're reaching out to to support us with that area. Does that that, that was kind of my it's question. As vague as possible, but still, no, but yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. You, you, it's, it's a great way of, even if it's not a finalized number. It's, that it needs love. Jumps off the page yeah, absolutely. It does. Mm -hmm. is, yeah. Yes. yes, that's exactly where we're heading with that. Yeah. Yes, that was a question I was going to ask. Mm -hmm. And to me, not only the first row. Yeah. It's the worst row. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I think there's some things that that can be done to help, I guess, strategy wise to if you have I guess if you have the same um, situation as you had in the fall, you're probably going to get similar results in the spring yes. if you don't do something different, different. several things different. Mm -hmm. So while, while the first row is not the best row, but there, there are several concerns. Yeah. But thank you for, for sharing. And then are, are we good with that one? Well, do you, do you have all the questions answered for that one? I'm not going to say, are we going to good? Are we ready to move on? Good. And can we move on? We can move on. Okay. Um, your, your last page should be um, unofficial work keys. And then those are the level of credentials that were earned. Entice from, to go from the middle to the right. From the middle to the right. I think that is um, more, I think it has to do with understanding what this is. Um, I think it has to do with when, it, when a child takes this particular test, knowing why they're taking it and what the results of that test could help them do. Um, so I think uh, public relations, PR, plays a lot to it. I also think having our local um, businesses understand that this is a credential that's important to them and really seeking and looking at, okay, if I've got a student um, 
who is on the far right versus the middle, what does that mean? And really educating the workforce and, and our and employers on what work keys can do. And so those are some of the things we've talked with um, with Mr. Barrington about having conversations with employers in the area and just looking at this credential as, you know, what does it mean to be, if I were taking this test, what does it mean to get a gold versus a silver? Right. right. So I think, uh, I think just um, communication and public relations piece is, is going to be big in that one. Because as a parent, if you, I mean, if you don't know that that's an important, what you can get from what information this tells you, you're not necessarily pushing your child to do well on that particular test because you don't know what the test is for. So I think we've got some work to do in that area, if that makes sense. If we can tie it to the CTE portion, that I, there's a lot of value on that area, especially you see it now in the adult population. They're coming back and completing that mm -hmm. because they want to put that in their resume. resume. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I think, again, with the CTE growth on certificates, it, yeah. If there's any way to combine together. it, it could mm -hmm. it could catapult those numbers. Absolutely, it does. But just really knowing what that test means too yeah. is important. And I think a lot of our students don't they don't know why they're taking the test, and parents don't know why they're taking the test. Just that they they're a completer and they have to take that test. So I think that would definitely benefit us. And there'll there'll be another one in the in the spring as well. So. Any other questions over the information that's in front of you? And I'm going to take all those yellow folders back at the end of the meeting. So, Make sure yes, we have a new testing director, and she wants to make sure everything is is ducks in a row. So. All right, our third item on the information was the DPI review of the AIG plan. You guys approved the AIG plan in the spring. Once you approve it, we send it to DPI and DPI just makes some general recommendations. They don't approve or disapprove a plan. That is your, thank you, that is your job as a school board, but they do give us feedback. And so the feedback was relatively, it was, it was fine. There were a few minor suggestions. Um, they're looking if, if the practice, according to their rubric, was evident, partially evident, or non-evident. And so everything was either evident or partially evident. There's just some areas they want us, maybe like in processes, procedures, to be more clear about some things. But overall, it was it was fine. We will not have to. Um, you will not have to reapprove anything. It, it's it's a done deal as far as you guys are concerned. But we will look at the feedback and we'll move forward with making any suggested changes that we feel are necessary for the next submission, which would be in three 2025. So it's 22 to 25. So I just wanted to put that in there for you guys to take a look at. Questions? Thank you. Okay. And then the last thing on the agenda is just you, every time we have any kind of research studies that we approve or we would participate in voluntarily, I put them in here. And so the net, we're doing a research study or working with North Carolina um, University at Chapel Hill on the Eckers Early Childhood Environmental Rating Scale. Um, Principal Dirks has shared this information with the staff. If they choose to participate, they can. It is not, none of our participation is ever mandatory. And so if you don't know about Eckers, it's called Eckers, it's that rating scale, and it's a formative assessment for, for the classroom, and it just goes through. So the study is going to be looking at that formative assessment system and just does it um, does it align well with the, ser the students we're serving, and does it make sense to continue to use that scale or not? And if not, what kind of changes could they recommend to the state in that rating scale is really all that is. So, and I'm not sure if we have anyone who's participating yet or not, because that just went out last week, so. Any questions for me? Questions for Dr. Malinas. Any other questions for her? Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next person on the agenda is Mr. Law. Good afternoon. Afternoon. I've got a few updates to give you um, in the technology and facilita uh, facilities realm. 
um, just general, our Power School Unified Insights, which is part of our strategic plan, is through data val validation and the what they call the Essentials dashboards. And it's next to go into the implementation phase. They had some glitches in early January when Dr. Molinas and Ms. Kimbrough were going to work with the implementation specialists, so they've rescheduled that, but it's uh, moving forward. Um, <clears throat> the uh, HVAC renovations, uh, you actually approved moving forward with Piedmont Service Group tonight and the consent agenda, so hopefully we can get under contract and get that going so we can start some work at Butler this summer in the ESSER II part of that phase. Uh, we have a, a progress update from December 20th on the energy savings project, which is beyond our last meeting. So I'll open that briefly. Um, the solar system at sunset is now online. We uh, did a, a cut over January 3rd and 4th, uh, had to work with Duke Energy and the inspections department, and we had to cut power and and connect the system and reconnect, and that's all in place. Obviously, our lighting has been done for a while. It's overall complete. Uh, we do have a new condensing boiler at the Car Street building, the two-story building at Sunset Avenue. That went in over the holiday break as well. So as you can see, I didn't get much time off. Um, so, But it is in place and operating. That is uh, the... We, we actually, over the break, put in the boiler that handles the domestic hot water for the kitchen and the uh, bathrooms and the exceptional children's department where we need domestic hot water, hot water. So that is online and working. And obviously our chiller is online. When the temperature outside says a chiller should come on, it should come on. We're still working on commissioning at the high school. We've put in these VFDs. And just practically, you can tell it is likely to save energy, though we don't have the official numbers on it. Because if you've ever been in the atrium area of the high school prior to now, you always heard the air heat or cool, and you heard the vents rattling. Now that we have this variable flow air, you don't hear that all the time, but we're still at a comfortable set point and the system's not sitting there pumping air and running fans. So just in layman's terms, you can probably already tell it's going to save energy, which was the intent of the system. And that's still in progress. We've had uh, a few hiccups along the way where some people lost comfort settings, but it's because the system was being worked on and programming was being done, and we got it back online as quickly as we could. Um, and we're working on those similar updates on controls for the new elements at Sunset Avenue, the, the boiler systems over there, which are new. Um, I do want to switch back to this tab and show you a neat um, drone video that Mr. Bill Powell put together for us of, of our new solar PV system on top of Sunset Avenue. So since um, Mr. Bill Powell is here with us, do you have anything you'd like to share with the board? You can just press the button on that mic. I get a lot of questions. They ask me all the time, well, how much are these solar panels going to produce? What what kind of energy is that going to do? What could it cover once they're fully active? So, Yeah, so that's a good question. Um, Bill, press the button on that mic so you'll go through the live stream. Okay. Am I good now? <laughs> all right. So... Yeah, and that's a great question. The The solar system produce 
produces roughly 100 kW. And to put that into practical terms, um, your um, your your lighting system uh, right now uh, is let's see after our retrofit is pulling about 200 k or or yeah about 200 kW. So it's it's meeting at least half of your lighting load. Um, you know so um you know it's that that's a that that's a good bit of power and uh so it will have a significant amount of savings um and uh we are uh actually i was looking today we we are 95 percent complete and um you know so we're ve we're getting very close um we do have commissioning going on in the in in the high school and we'll have continued commissioning. So I, I do want to say we really appreciate everybody's patience. We we know there's periods of time where people start getting hot, getting cold, you know. <laughs> and uh, I apologize, but um, you know we we are working to make it more energy efficient, which will help pay for all of these in, improvements. Um, you know, that that we're doing, uh, for example, the boilers that Mr. Lowe mentioned. Um, were there were there other questions? We really won't see a true savings cost on this for six months or so to kind of after everything gets done and we kind of start comparing <laughs> this year's apples to last year's apples to kind of the the the, the see, but it's going. It's gonna to have to run a little bit, and then if all the lights are off on Saturdays and Sundays when nobody's in the facilities, and we don't have that light load, then that could go backwards. It, I mean, it, it, it if the solar power puts in more energy than we're using, <laughs> then it, it it comes off the light bill, correct? Yes, sir. That's correct. <laughs> Thank you. Um, that's correct, and, and that's that's a very good point, sir. That is that is net metering. Um, Duke Energy has what's called a bidirectional meter, so you can put it this way: Yes, if we're producing more power than is needed right now, then um, the meter will spin backwards, and and there are times that that will happen. I mean, um, you know, I mentioned the lighting load. That's with everything on you know, at the same time, you know, and there, there are, you know, there are times when, um, you know, it will produce more power than, than is needed. How practical is it to implement it at some, at some of our other facilities? Um, we looked at, uh, during the development phase, uh, we looked at several other facilities. This was the most economically feasible one, and and it just it, it just has to do with system size and and what your Duke Power billing rate is, and 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 those kind of things. Um, it, it even has to do with with the roof because there is a relatively new roof at, at where we put it at sunset. And see, as soon as we, you know, when we looked at some other sites, if we have to change a roof, I know, I know there's some other roofing work needs to be done. You know, if <laughs> if our installation forces you to put on a new roof, and if we include that in the economics, then you know it becomes a longer payback. You know, so it, it you know it does depend on how you look at it, but is it is it possible? Certainly. Um, you know, especially uh, you know we can do future phases. You know, CMTA certainly does that. Um, you know, we we can definitely look at more possibilities. All right, thank you, Bill. Thank you. I'll move on to my my other items. Um, the grant submittals. You know, we have the school violence uh, program grant that we've done camera installation. They're going to start soon. Um, we had to get some more equipment in and that should come in soon 
and you approved on the agenda tonight, the consent agenda, then selection of vendors for our grant funding from the needs-based public school capital fund that's going to fund major roofing replacements at LC Carr, um, a minor uh, replacement at Butler Avenue School, and some pretty extensive replacements at Sunset Avenue, including uh, through wall flashing that where we have some leaks that come down into the main 800 hall. That's everything that was new on my section. Any questions for me? All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Lowe. And thank you, um, Mr. Powell, for your input. I'd like a little narration with the little video clip so you can talk me through what, what I was seeing. <laughs> Just say. <laughs> All right. Thank and you so while much. While you're here, we are raising some money for some athletic facility upgrades. So if your company would like to, uh, to contribute, we greatly appreciate it. He's the expert. Okay. <laughs> Just know that. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> um, Ms. Peterson, you're next. Listed on board docs, you will find one policy for first reading. Please let me know if you have questions regarding this policy. All right. Uh, uh, Just one. Okay. Um, my next informational item was is an AD, is an AED update. Um, on board docs, you will find the updated information on the AED and CPR status. At this current time, we have 163 employees who are CPR and first aid certified. All school administrators, bus drivers, custodians, and coaches are CPR and first aid certified. All child nutrition and instructional assistance will be CPR and first aid certified by the end of the school year. There are nine AEDs in the district and two are on our athletic fields. At the current time, we are looking to purchase 17 AED units. All buildings are currently stocked with EpiPens and are there any questions about the AED, CPR, or first aid information? The EpiPens, what's their shelf life? A year. Really? Yes, and they are very expensive. Good. I know they're expensive. They are very yeah. expensive. Um, we added the EpiPens to three of our facilities, and it cost us close to two thousand dollars good gracious and they only last a year hmm. is there any grant funding to help with that um there's grant funding for the schools for like auxiliary um alp central office we have to pay out of pocket but each year um there's an entity through ncdpi that gives us money to reimburse us for those. Okay. But everybody else, we have to pay out of pocket. Just like the AEDs. The AEDs, there's there's not any grant fund. Well, there's some grant funding, but not for the but, whole but school their, system. Their shelf life is usually around seven years though, isn't it? They have extended it to ten. They have. Mm -hmm. So can you are these too old or can you refurbish? Because some of them you can send back if they're to, to get them updated to get them updated just right fine. and um the ones that we have now once their shelf life is complete they're done they're done yeah because they were gonna be um if they're dated back to like 08 when the school was built right or so on and so forth then there's no updates because they're so old they're so old but so far all the ones we have are are working are working and operational and within Mm -hmm. the, the the shelf life of what they they are yes sir and okay. i think and the good thing about what we're doing here in clinton city schools as i told dr johnson i feel more comfortable than my previous um school districts with this part of safety well with all parts of safety but especially with this since i'm facilitating it but we um have implemented the gold package with the company that we purchase our aeds through mm -hmm. 
And what this means is, let's say our, the batteries are super expensive. So you can spend $700 on a battery. Mm -hmm. So let's say our battery goes out at Clinton High School. All we have to do is call. He come either same day or next day, bring a, another AED, and, and that's it. Um, let's say in 2018, we had to use the AED. So we the pads they're only good for one time, right? And they're expensive too. Yes, ma'am. So when we use those, we called him. He came same day and bought more more pads. Nothing out of pocket. You can't beat that. So, but we do pay um, for this gold service each year. He comes um, once per semester to check it to make sure if it needs to be um, serviced or whatnot. Um, if we need new pads, whatever. He diagnosed it there on site. So that's the gold package, but we do have to purchase, you know, additional ones and add the gold package onto it. But you can't beat that because the battery is seven hundred and fifty dollars. Any other questions? Uh Miss Peterson. Well, I'm impressed that we have this many people certified. I feel very comfortable with uh with the number of people certified in the AEDs in our and, in our schools. And it really doesn't matter what it costs if it saves a life. Exactly. And we'll have more at the end of the year once all of all of our classified staff are certified, which will come soon. Thank you for your hard work. That's important. Any other questions or comments on Ms. Peterson? This not, isn't necessarily okay. a Ms. Peterson, but since we're talking about the AEDs, it jogged my memory. Where are we on the grant stuff? And this may be in yours. I don't remember. Where are we on the, the new modern metal detector? I know there's some grants out there. We were looking at two or three of them, I know. So wh where are we on that? The deadline for the grant is January 20th, this Friday. We are working on the grant. Matter of fact, it's complete. We just need to review it to make sure that the details that we want are there. It is a competitive grant, so we want to be sure that we get the maximum points that we possibly can get, but it will be submitted by the deadline this week. Are you talking about the ones that we saw? Yeah, these are the modern ones you just walked through. Yep. You can have them. We have to give a lot of credit to Clinton City Police Department. They were important in writing the narrative for us. They did a great job. Basically, the only thing that we had to do was transfer the information that they sent to us to the grant within CCIP. So I do want to give them a shout out for doing a great job and assisting us. So what is the the turnaround time for being notified if you were uh, granted the money? It depends on, I'm sorry. I haven't seen a deadline. Before. No, it depends on the workload at NCDPI. Sometimes we get a response as quick as one day. We submitted some things for a review Friday and within less than an hour, we were approved. Sometimes it takes us reminding them that we submitted some things and can you take a look at it? You know, so it all depends on their workload and their turnaround time. But giving credit to DPI as well, they have been returning things to us quickly. Now, keep in mind that this is a competitive grant once again. So it may take a little bit longer to make sure that everyone's points are properly reviewed. So keep your fingers crossed. Clinton City hopefully will get more than we received in the past. Very good. Other questions regarding Evolve, I think is the name of it. I get an email about every day or so. Yeah, the that the ones, <laughs> ones we're looking at that uh, SRO Fisher and Chief Davis were most interested in are, it's a similar technology, but it's called Open Gate. They're used in a lot of professional stadiums. And um, yeah, again, thanks to Chief Davis for writing a letter of support and SRO Fisher for writing his letter of support. I actually put the narrative together, Dr. V. Special shout out to Mr. Lowe. <laughs> Don't forget your own. <laughs> One of the CCS very own. Thank you. <laughs> he said he put his own plug in. Mic drop. <laughs> uh, 
when we when we do get the money and we buy two, three, whatever, we're buying three. So when well, yeah, that goes without saying. Um, but can we possibly um, get with the newspaper and recognize the Mr. Lowe and hit you, Dr. Van, and then also do a joint thing with the police department and really get it out there? Yes. I think that would be great as one of my duties for the district PIO. I would be sure to give Mr. Lowe and Clinton City Police Department credit. I'll stay to the sideline. The only thing I had to do was enter the information that they created. Yep, and I'm I'm sure SRO Fisher and Chief Davis will want to, I'll put it in quotes, play with this new system because I don't they may have walked through one as an attendee at an event, but they've not had uh, any time to look at one in person. So they'll uh, they'll want to do that, and I'm sure we'll uh, share with Sampson Independent and other media outlets uh, our system and have a chance that they can come by once we're confident with the system. We'll have to go through these systems require training for our staff, so we'll have to complete the training first, and then we'll be sure to do that. Idea since I know he's got family in the district and he's reported up for us before to get Gilbert Bays involved to show we're being proactive in terms of student safety. Um, because God forbid if we make, make a mistake, you that some can be quick to pounce on that. And this is a good thing being proactive, so I think it would be neat to get him involved too. So, and we actually walk through the one in in greensboro um and they are cool i mean they are they are really neat so and the buzzer didn't go off when clark and jeremy went through <laughs> but it did when dr brunson went through okay i guess we need to move on right <laughs> Uh, thank you all for your hard work and uh, great having great partners in our in our town and our the city of Clinton to help us on these ventures. And please let the board know when these come in so that we can uh, uh, enjoy the training that we're doing to make sure our schools are safe. All right. Next person on the agenda is Dr. Johnson. Thank you, Dr. B, members of the board. Always glad to see you and have you here. It's also great to have gifted uh, employees uh, who are gifted at different things and putting these uh, narratives together and putting it into the system and understanding uh, NCCCIP. Not everybody can understand that platform. So uh, you've heard from most of my staff today and they do a fantastic job uh, in their own uh, rights and the things that they're responsible for. So thank them. I do thank you all as well. And they have to put up with meeting with me on executive cabinet meeting for three hours at least uh, on Mondays or as this is our Monday today. Uh, a couple of cards of acknowledgement to start off with. Uh, we have uh, Miss Newman uh, and she sends thank you for all the prayers, thoughts, condolences, flowers and gifts in our time of need. Uh, we are eternally grateful for all the love and continued support. Once again, thank you for all you do and continue to do Miss Thelma Newman. And it says your thoughtfulness means so much more than words can say, the Harding and Hobbs family. Uh, and this next one is from uh, the family of Ronald Ronnie Darwin Warren. And it says, dear family and friends, whether you kept this in your thoughts and prayers, sent a lovely arrangement, gave a memorial donation or helped out in any way, your love and kindness brought us great comfort and will always be remembered. The family of Ronald, Ronnie, Darwin, Warren. So I uh, definitely uh, want to remember uh, these uh, families and our thoughts and prayers. And we thank them for taking the time out in their time of need uh, to send those cards of condolences and thank yous uh, to us as well. Uh, the good news items uh, are uh, on um this is, a, uh, this is the second time I linked it in this way. Uh, so you have, uh, John, if you'll open out the shout outs. Uh, if you follow our weekly memos that Dr. Um, uh, Molinas puts together, these will be familiar to you uh, as uh, we have uh, this uh, document that she puts together with the help of her team. Uh, we're talking a lot about teamwork. And so you can see uh, our different winners uh, from the Clinton High School DECA Regional. 
many, many uh, outstanding students and their talents uh, being um, shown in, in that meeting there. Uh, Bianca Serrano, James Darden, Evan Gillespie, Jackson Gunnels, Veronica Men uh, Menendez, Sidney Mathis, Marley Johnson, Ryan Freeman, and Emma Mitchell, all with uh, top 10 finishes in their prospective areas, and we thank them for their hard work. Uh, our Public Safety One students received a wonderful opportunity on Friday, December 9th to tour the courthouse and hear from different judges and lawyers, and there's some great pictures from that event. Uh, we also uh, have the Clinton Sam uh, Sampson Chamber of Commerce uh, and our students, I think there's four juniors, uh, one of them with the last name Johnson, who lives at my address, is participating in this event, and she is learning a lot about our community, about our town. I also participated in the senior leadership event uh, some years ago, and recently they had the opportunity to take place, uh, take uh, part in manufacturing and industry day. And our students were able to tour and learn about Hogslat, Schindler, and Sampson Community College truck driving facility and program. Here's several pictures from that event. Uh, our Clinton High School DECA and marketing students got to volunteer uh, with Miss Donatelli from the Sampson County Arts Council to help with decorating cookies for Christmas. And you see a picture of that event. Uh, it's kind of hard to see because the picture is on the next is on the next page, John. But uh, Clinton High School junior and I see Ben a lot in the YMCA. He's been completing his CTE internship at the Sampson County Y. Uh, and during his final presentation, he stated what he learned in his Microsoft Excel and sports and entertainment marketing classes really helped him with assigned task during his internship. We appreciate the Y for allowing Ben to come and learn. Uh, several pictures of Ben uh, right there. Uh, then we had another Clinton High School senior, Charlie, uh, completed his CTE Advanced Studies presentation, and he uh, worked with Mr. Craig Lennon on hydroponics and growing plants in the system uh, under, uh, under Craig, and we appreciate all their work. Uh, there's some pictures from that event as well. Uh, and then Mr. Stephen Evans from Sam's Community College shared information on their welding programs and other trade programs uh, with Mr. Adrian Brown's agricultural mechanics student. There's a picture from that event as well. Congratulations to our new, newly certified uh, National Board certified teachers. You've got Kaylin Heron, Daniel, Danielle Lipinska, Jessica Royal, and Jeff Davidson. Uh, so congratulations to all of those teachers. We're uh, most proud of them and all of our National Board teachers uh, here in our district. Uh, we uh, collected toys and uh, Sunset Avenue. I think every school was a winner, but uh, the school that actually had the most items that was collected was Sunset. Each group did a phenomenal job of assisting us with that. And special thanks to our JROTC and Beta Club for heading these projects, LCK collected 45 items, BAS 22, Sunset 71, and Clinton High 47. And those are some pictures from that event. We do thank uh, uh, Dr. Harding for kind of heading that whole project up as well. Um, and they were those items were successfully delivered to the Sampson Center on Barden Street. And I'm sure that there were many uh, uh, students that benefited from those uh, toys being collected by our students. And we thank them for their efforts. Our Hosa Club sponsored a uh, blood drive, and it was a blood drive uh, with uh, collaboration with Sampson uh, Regional. And they collected 43 pints of blood. I think that's pretty good. Uh, and here's some pictures from, from that event. And then we had some students that participated in uh, the well, some students from the DECA club that led the efforts at our Clinton Christmas parade uh, on December the 10th. And here is them holding the flag, holding the chamber flag. And we appreciate these four students for participating in that event as well. Uh, shout out to Miss Jennifer Thompson's uh, business class. They worked on completing some cover letters, some resumes, some job applications. So you heard earlier from Teresa's presentation about some things that we're doing for, uh, uh, you know, the, the trying it for enlistment, the four E's and all that. And so a lot of work is coming out of our CTE field with that. And we appreciate all of that. Uh, just recently, we learned that Miss Kina Gautier is a finalist, one of the 27 finalists. There's a picture of Kina right here. Uh, she's one of the 27 finalists for the B-Toy uh, in the NCAT, uh, and we'll hear, for, 
we'll learn more about that in March. And so um, I'll say we, they've been doing this for several years. And this is the first time that we've had anybody come out and visit uh, us in regards to us being a finalist. Uh, so I'm hoping that that means we are a finalist finalist and not just one of the 27 finalists. But again, uh, we've sent somebody, I think, three years in a row. Uh, and this is the first time anyone's come out to recognize one of our finalists. So I, I, I hope that that's a. Uh, that's some good some good news there. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, I I think y'all know what uh, what gems we have with uh, John and Bevel and Lowe, but they have been intricately involved in the S E D B A. We could ask John what that stands for, but it basically stands for Southeastern District Band. John, Southeastern District Bandmasters Association. Uh, and they've been involved. I think John told me today out of 29 years, he's done it maybe 28 uh, or uh, assisting students to become all district and all state from the uh, from the southeast area. And so on January the 7th, uh, we had 13 CHS band students who auditioned uh, for the uh, all district band. And that was held at Sampson Middle. And not only was it our 13 that were competing but they competed against 489 other students from 42 schools. Um, and so our students that scored high enough uh, to uh, to move forward to Corinth holders are all listed there. Again, John is the expert. So if y'all got questions about this, uh, but uh, our students uh, are all listed there uh, for you. Uh, fantastic job by all of our students who have been working very diligently and learning these skills most likely since sixth grade uh, are all listed there uh, second chairs and first chairs and all of that uh, any questions for John on our all district band that's the high school then more recently and both of these events were really recent uh, but uh, at Mac Williams Middle School we had our middle school students compete and they there were 33 middle school students and they competed against 308 students from 47 schools and the following 18 students scored high enough to move forward to Corinth holders. Uh, they are also listed there. John told us the difference today between the symphonic band and the concert band. The symphonic band is the highest scoring students per instrument. Is that correct, John? That's correct. Symphonic band is the top set of scores in each instrument, and then concert band is the next set of scores per instrument, and there's a different number each instrument. Like they'll take 12 flutes, 10 trumpets, four saxophones, but symphonic's the top set of scores, and concert's the next set of scores. But I think y'all know what kind of gifted student uh, students we have here in our district. And there's just, again, another example of the uh, hard work and dedication of our students and what uh, our band directors and previous band director uh, and previous band directors before John and Bevelin have really worked to create quite a culture uh, here of the arts. And we applaud uh, all of their efforts and thank them for uh, a job well done. Uh, Speaking of that, we have some students that were I didn't want I didn't know when to share this uh, because I got this information some time ago, but I knew we had our athletic um, awards program and I wasn't sure if coaches had already shared this information. So it is a little late, but this is our all county fall sports and John's going to pull up our women's uh, cross country. And you can see our students right there, Evan Gillespie, JC Hilburn and Kate Hobson, who were our all county women's cross country uh i asked and i said i sent james an email i said uh coach lewis i'm trying to find out about our men's there's not there was only uh three men's teams uh that had uh cross country and you have to have four in the bylaws to have an all county team so there's no uh men's all county athletes john will pull up the football uh for us and so our football all county athletes uh, were uh, Nidarian QB1, uh, Blackwell, Jameek Sampson, and Jeffrey Arnett were our all county football athletes, our soccer athletes. And we also had the all county uh, soccer um, player of the year. And John is going to pull that up for us as well. Um, 
it, we call him Addy. Uh, and Addy was our player of the year. Marcos Martinez and Anthony uh, Ruiz were our other all county. Again, Addy was the uh, all county player of the year as well. And then volleyball was Mackenzie Pope. Abby Batchelor and Emma Mitchell, all were our all county. That was acknowledged and uh, shared at our athletic meeting earlier in December. Uh, I was going to try to get out and get some painted parking spots of our seniors. That didn't happen today, uh, but we have seen, if you want to see them, just as you're leaving, go by the uh, uh, Dark Horse Stadium and over to our parking lot, and you'll see our senior parking spaces. They look really neat. Uh, and uh, we've had several seniors to come out. That was something that the administration put together. They are doing this at a several other high schools in the area, but the painted parking spots, check those out as you're uh, leaving. I think you will enjoy seeing those. Uh, and they put together parameters on, uh, they did talk to John and myself, and we've got some parameters on how to paint those back to the original color or close to the original color and then the seniors for the next year will be able to do the same thing to their parking spots as well uh sunset avenue they put together a production of annie i actually got to go out and see it uh one afternoon i came out on a sunday afternoon our students and staff did a tremendous job i was so impressed we actually had a, a staff uh, member who kind of rewrote annie uh, uh to a more up-to-date uh and it was really good so i enjoyed that as well uh miss luz ortega ortega had a uh christmas uh kind of around the world uh program for some of her students and this is a picture of luz and uh, from sunset avenue and uh, you can tell her students are uh, happy and excited about being there and we appreciate her efforts as well uh was informed by miss bevelin lowe uh, that she had an opportunity to be a mentor in the Rural uh, Educator Enrichment Program. Uh, she went through that program and now she's a, a, a mentor for it. And so we appreciate all of her efforts as well. And she just continues to be a great uh, bright spot in our district. Uh, Ms. Wanda Coleman had an opportunity to come out and we've got the principal here uh, and participate uh, in our SMS basketball team picture uh, experience. She says she really didn't know what to expect, uh, but she wanted to reach out to us and let us know that she congratulates team members for their positive attitude, good manners, and overall demeanor. She also complimented the coaches for their willingness to lead the middle school students. She said the picture day was very organized, ran smoothly, and she was proud to be a part. Ms. Coleman wants Principal Faison to feel free to call her when he needs her to volunteer again. And she says, congratulations to everyone involved in the SMS Team Picture Day. Thank you, Ms. Coleman. Uh, and so great, uh, we, we thank her so much for being part. A couple things to be on the lookout for. Be on the lookout for the Sampson Independent Shining Stars. You know, they put together that each year uh, and that uh, will be highlighted in my February good news. It's kind of like a, uh, a booklet that they put together, usually all color photos. That'll be great. We look forward to seeing that. And then January is School Board Appreciation Month. And so at your uh, table, uh, you have a little uh, small token of our appreciation. And we thank you for your dedication to our district, our students, our parents, and our community. And it's such a blessing to work with each and every one of you. I appreciate all that you do for me and our district and our students. And we look forward to continuing this partnership that we have with y'all. Thank, you, sir. Thank, that, you. Thank you. That's our good news. Now, it's okay to say that Clark turns your hair gray sometimes. Well, you see right here. Right? <laughs> you know, it is what it is. Uh, but I do, I do love him. I do love him. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, speaking of money, uh, great segue. Uh, you guys just recently approved uh, the new uh, coaches pay scale. Uh, it was last month, and then we did the positions this month. The difference between 21-22 and this new pay scale, which is going to be retroactive back to July 1, is going to be approximately $40,000 based on the numbers that I had Emily run. I think what she got was like 39999 and some change. So when I say approximately 40,000, it's it's kicking it down. And that was before we actually gave permission for some uh, 
in the past, we've not had middle school paid assistance. And so we're going to be able to have middle school paid assistance and some other uh, approved JV uh, assistance. We've had people to be in these positions and basically be volunteers. Uh, and so um, we're, we're going to move forward that the change to our coaches pay uh, haven't had any changes since like 2012. Uh, so we're real excited about this for our coaches. We thank our Board of Education for moving this forward and all the work that's been put together by our ADs and our coaches uh, to ensure that our athletes are of high quality uh, and ready to play teams like Midway. Speaking of, since we got a basketball games at Midway tonight, go dark horses. Uh, one of the things that came forward, because I know we've had some discussion about this in recent months, uh, is in regards to a calendar. Last month, uh, you all signed a proclamation to have me to look at a calendar that would closely align to Sampson Community College. Here is an article that I felt the need to kind of share with you uh, in regards to uh, Union County Schools. Uh, they've had two parents. Now, Union County is large. Uh, but they've had two uh, two parents to reach out and sue the school board over adopting a 23-24 calendar that defies the uh, state law. One of this one of this one of the individuals was uh, an equestrian as an equestrian farm, and she was saying it was going to take money out of her pocket. The other just did not support the notion of returning to school. Uh, early in August. Uh, so the article's there for you to peruse. Uh, I've also got for you, John, uh, is some calendar examples. Uh, so some things that we have shared with our um, teacher of the years and that we'll plan to move forward uh, uh, to our um, school level uh, committees uh, are a Samps Community College aligned calendar. And we've, we've looked at this which has like an 88 and 89 day split. You can see that right there. And John, if you go down to one that says, um, I think there was another one somewhere, traditional draft right there. Uh, this, is, this is the one where you can see there being 20 more days in the second semester than there is in the first semester. So uh, we're gonna uh, meet with our teachers of the year uh, we had to change that meeting uh, from next Tuesday until the 31st, I believe it is, uh, Ms. Peterson. Uh, and we're going to meet with them, explain this process one more time, have them to go out and share uh, these calendars with our building level contacts, uh, get some input from our building level contacts, and we hope to be able to present that in February. One last thing, John, if you'll uh, open that one. It says district responses to survey. There was a, a, a local superintendent who reached out to Jack Hoke to have uh, to get have uh, superintendents fill out a Google sheet on what their current calendar looks like, if they plan to adopt a traditional calendar or an alternative calendar in 23-24, and if that calendar was already approved by the Board of Education, you can see districts like Pitt. Gaston, Mooresville Graded, uh, Polk, um, Currituck, uh, Avery, Washington, uh, Ash, Henderson, Mount Airy City, Clinton City, uh, and Jackson were all looking at alternative as an option. Um, and so um, I think this year there were three, John, I think is that's correct, uh, that had uh, alternative calendars. Um, you can see right there Gaston, Mooresville Graded, um, Avery, Washington, there were four. Um, and um, um, I've not heard of any um, things coming down from DPI or our legislators, but of course we know our legislators are now in session. We'll just have to continue to follow that. But I did want to share that article with you since Dr. we Jay, talked about it. In a situation like this, since this is only a couple of years old, the more people get their feet wet, and they see what's going on, the more and more schools are going to start jumping in the pond? Well, I think that's what um, we would hope in Clinton City because, uh, you know, we definitely uh, like a calendar. Well, I think we're more favorable to a calendar that's aligned to our community college. Um, there has been some information that came down from the legislators even before they went back into session that said they were going that there were some legislators that wanted to look at a calendar that ran from Labor Day to Memorial Day. So this has been 
this is nothing new. Yeah. Uh, there's this been a is that doable? Now it used to be eons ago when if you had an extremely long school day. Well, oh, I follow you. Okay. Yeah. So it could be done, but we'd be in school till five o'clock. Most likely, because you have to have the uh, and there was some of that in that in the in that uh, calendar examples. Cheryl had some of that information in there uh, in the state law somewhere. John, there's a uh, a tab at the bottom that says like calendar. Oh, for that, it's a good homework at school. Must have a minimum. Must have a minimum of 185 days or 1,025 hours. So, like Cumberland has drastically reduced their number of days, and they're in school less days, but they're but they're, in but they're days long. a lot longer. Their high school's in school till 4:30. Yeah. Um, so, uh, 